I wasn't too old when this event happened, probably six or seven, but the story is crystal clear in my mind as if it happened yesterday. As a kid, I was a fan of driving around the town, but this event altered my mindset forever. I lived in a small village along with my grandma and uncle. As long as I can remember, they were the only family I ever had. My uncle worked on a nearby farm, often taking me to see and learn. This accident happened on a Saturday evening when my uncle and I were cutting firewood for my grandma. It was winter in our village, and firewood had become a necessity for us. We were by Han Lake, and the sun was setting, so we decided to wrap up and head back home because the lakeside was famous for being haunted. I heard stories about people being chased by horrifying creatures. Some people also described the creature as a mix of a human, dog, and a bear but I always found it ridiculous until I myself was chased by it. I didn't believe in all those rumors, but I was never in the mood to experience something spooky, so I quietly followed my uncle to the car. We were heading back through a dirt road, and my uncle drove at about 30 miles an hour. The roads leading to the village from the river were steep and muddy, thus my uncle wasn't driving too fast. It had been 15 or 20 minutes while sitting in the passenger seat in the car, and I constantly felt an intense gaze over me. At first, I thought it was just a mind game and that I was too tired and just needed some sleep. But the feeling only intensified and I wanted to look out my window to make sure that I was just imagining things. But as soon as I tilted my head towards the window, my uncle let out a panicked, don't. I was taken aback by his reaction and my heart was beating as if it would pop out of my chest any minute. I was still in my state of horror when I heard a tap on the window. My panic grew, and I looked at my uncle for an explanation of what was happening, but he looked terrified. His face had gone pale, his foot was tightly pressed on the accelerator, and he was mumbling some prayer in my native language loudly. I wanted to cry and scream, but I just sat there, horror-stricken by what was happening, hoping it was all a dream and that I would soon wake up in my bed at my house but it wasn't a dream. Because the tapping on my window got louder and now someone was practically banging on it. I let out a whimper as an indicator to my uncle that I was scared and wanted all this to end. He looked at me apologetically and took a sharp turn to the right. Then he said, look at me. His voice was loud and clear. Don't turn away. I nodded my head. He sounded concerned as if some real danger was following us. As soon as I thought the trouble was over, again I heard a tapping sound, but this time from the back window. I didn't look back, but I could sense the creature tapping on the window, getting furious. The tapping was getting stronger. I wanted to jump out of the car and run away, but I just sat there, looking at my uncle constantly as he focused on the road in front of us. A minute or two passed, and we heard a bang from the back window, but a creaking sound made our blood run cold, implying that the glass had cracked. My uncle's breath got heavier as he tried to skid the car away. Our car wasn't very strong. A punch or two with the same intensity would have allowed the creature to seep in. I had my eyes fixed on the road, trying to find an escape to the situation we were encountering. The car again took a turn, this time much sharper than the previous one, and the silence fell all over the place. We had entered a dense forest, and a thick tree canopy was hovering above the car. My heart was still beating furiously. I wanted to let out a scream, a cry for help, but I was afraid that the tapping and banging might come back. The only thing to be heard was the sound of our car, but soon we heard a screeching sound. It was loud, but it came from a distance. I was too shaken by all that was happening and looked at my uncle again to which he sighed and said, It's gone. You're safe now. Safe from what? What was banging on our window? Why didn't he let me look at it? A million questions arose in my mind, but I just sat there hugging my knees, staring at the radio, which showed that it was 8.35 p.m. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't numb at that moment. We'll ask your father to do a prayer in the morning so the evil will forget our faces, he said. I nodded again and stayed still in my seat. 
He started humming a prayer to help me relax, and I calmed down a bit as soon as I saw my grandma's house in view. Before getting out of the car, I turned to my uncle and asked why he didn't let me turn to whatever was tapping on the window. His answer made my stomach curl. We would have lost you if you looked at it, son. It would have consumed you. I wanted to ask more questions. I was curious to know if it was the same creature other people had talked about, but the panicked look on my uncle's face didn't allow me to say anything at all. The night that followed was restless. After spending hours working on the dock, I wanted to get plenty of rest, but luck wasn't on my side. I had terrible nightmares in which I was back on the same road, but this time without a truck, and there was an uneasy and constant tapping and banging surrounding me. I tossed and turned the entire night, but ended up repeatedly on the same street. I woke up in the morning sweating due to all the scary experiences I had in my dream, and decided to call my uncle and talk about it. To my surprise, he had some nightmares too. I didn't see faces, just eyes, like brake lights you see on the road. It watched you, he explained. Before saying goodbye, I jokingly asked, why didn't you just step on the brake when it was in the back? I expected him to laugh a bit and just tell me that I was a genius for coming up with that idea, but instead, I heard nothing for a few seconds. And then what he said made my eyes widen because it wasn't alone. I hung up the phone still in shock by what he said. It wasn't alone. Were we surrounded by more than one of these creatures? Are they still following us? What did they want from us? Occupied by all the questions, I proceeded to the church with my uncle to get our prayers done, where the father told me how lucky I was to escape freely from the creature. I still didn't know exactly what they were referring to, but I still thanked God for rescuing us. I was utterly shaken by the time we reached home. It took me days to get rid of my nightmares, but it led me to believing in all those rumors about the creepy creature in the village. It's been years since that event happened. I'm 23 years old now, but I still can't find the courage to look outside when I hear a tap on the window. Sometimes I think about what could have happened if I had looked at it. Would I still be here? I still visit the lake to chop firewood with my uncle, except that I always have this terrible feeling of being watched constantly. <laughs>